we're going to now move on to systems with heat generation or in these two cases there was no heat generation so now we look at the slab uh, first and um, before that we, we want to say a few words about what do we mean by heat generation energy cannot be generated out of nothing energy is only converted from one form to another so other forms of energy are converted into heat when we talk about heat generation here is an example where in the tissue we have metabolic heat generation or in a compost file pile with bacterial activity there's biochemical heat generation then in heating food in a microwave we have electromagnetic energy converted into th uh, thermal energy electromagnetic into thermal okay and likewise in uh, in storing let's say vegetables we have to worry about the respiratory heat that is generated so those are examples of heat generation in a biological system so we are going to do heat conduction with generation in a slab like we did um, before for a slab except now with heat generation now remember we follow the same process that we should not lose sight of you know the procedure that we uh, follow to get to temperature profiles and heat flow so we start from the general governing equation uh, for the particular coordinate system and then we drop out terms that are not needed so it's steady state and there is nothing flowing through this remember our domain is this even though there can be fluid here and fluid here our domain does not include the fluid so velocity is zero so the governing equation for this problem and the boundary condition for this problem are uh, if we drop these two terms then that's all you know th that's all that we have left in our governing equation and this is second order so again um, we need two boundary conditions so the two boundary conditions are one is surface temperature is given and the other is the line of symmetry so at the line of symmetry we have dt dx equal to zero okay so let me rewrite that equation d square t dx square equal to minus q over k and we'll simply try to solve this so the uh, if we integrate once i get dt dx equal to minus q over k times x uh, plus some constant c1 now we use the first uh, or the second boundary condition first so the second boundary condition says that uh, second boundary condition is dt dx at x equal to zero is zero so if you plug in dt dx equal to zero at x equal to zero that gives me c1 equal to zero so c1 is gone and and so my um, equation now is just dt dx equal to minus q over k times x which if we integrate it again then i get a t equal to minus q over k x square over 2 plus c2 another constant of integration so this c2 we have to 
um, evaluate using my first boundary condition. So the first boundary condition says uh, T at X equal to L is T1. So I plug this in here uh, to get this one. T1, T is T1 minus Q over K, L square over 2 and C2. Okay. So now if I subtract this one uh, from uh, from t then i get t minus t1 is equal to minus q over 2k times x square over l square or i can rearrange as q l square over 2k times 1 minus x square over l square so this is my temperature uh, profile okay so so now back again this is my temperature profile and if i plot this temperature profile you know normally looking at the algebraic expression it may not be always very clear so it's good to plot it so you notice that it satisfies our boundary condition at x equal to l at x equal to l all of these the right hand side would be 0 and t would be equal to t1 and likewise you can see that it also satisfies uh, dt dx at x equal to um, 0 okay so th if this is my temperature equation then where is the maximum you notice the maximum is when x equal to 0 and so that maximum would be then t max minus t1 equal to ql square over 2k or t max is equal to t1 plus ql square over 2k so this maximum temperature is this t1 plus this quantity okay so um, and the shape of the profile is parabolic based on this x square here okay and here is an example of you know whether our prediction has anything to do with reality uh, can be seen here so this is a layer of compost uh, where we have heat generation so that's the thickness of the slab and here is actually measured temperature that you can see so you see the maximum is somewhere inside now you may wonder it does not look symmetric why do you think that is the case it's simply because the bottom and the top are not kept at the same temperature that's why their the profile is not symmetric whereas in here we have t1 on both sides and the profile is symmetric okay so what can we learn from the solution so if we look at the t max for example um, as q is increased t max is increased so if there's more heat generation inside then this maximum temperature will get higher why would this have to be the case if you think of the gradient if you think of the the gradient at the surface this has to increase to release all the heat this has to increase if the amount of heat generation inside is increased so if the gradient has to increase then the plot would be more like that so or in a very qualitative sense you can think of that from inside to outside it has to maintain a higher gradient to release more heat so if my outside is constant then the inside has to increase 
so as t1 is increased so if t1 is increased then again i have to increase the t max or t max has to increase so that it maintains the same gradient from the surface so that it can release the same amount of heat so when t1 is increased q is kept constant so the amount of heat generation is constant so if the same amount of heat has to be released then t1 then um, if t1 is increased t max would also have to increase so so that between these two points kind of uh, have to maintain the same gradient qualitatively speaking okay so now we want to look at the heat flow aspects here just like in other cases so notice some interesting aspect in here at the center line at the line of symmetry dt dx is zero so which means the flow minus k dt dx is the flux times the area is equal to zero uh, here uh, what this means is whatever happens the heat generated here is released this way and what is generated here is released this way they don't cross the center line because it's kind of a mirror image on both sides okay but let's look at the heat flow at this surface so that is minus ka dt dx at x equal to l so minus ka times what is my dt dx so i have t uh, given by this so dt dx is equal to q l square over 2k times minus 2 x over l square so if i plug in x equal to l then and these two cancels so then i get minus q l over k okay so that's my dt dx so if I plug in all that, then I get QLA. So whereas here at this uh, surface, at, um, at this point, x equal to zero, heat flow over this parallel surface of this is equal to zero. Here outside at x equal to L, it is equal to QLA. So that is different from what we did for steady state in a slab without heat generation. Uh, so although steady state, this time heat flow is not the same at the two locations. Why do you think that is the case? And the other question would be, you notice that the heat flow at this surface is equal to QLA. What is the meaning of Q? Q is watts per meter cube and L times A is the volume meter cube. So meter cube cancels. So QLA is the watts of heat generated. So the heat flow at this surface is equal to the total heat generated in here. Why do you think that is the case? 